All right, now comes the part where we will talk about reports. Now, what is a report? Report is when you want to log the data, whatever you are seeing here, and you want to print out in a PDF or in a physical paper form, and you want to give it to somebody else that, yeah, this is a report of our production, of our parameters, whatever. So you can generate reports in Ignition Scan as well. For example, if I show you one page, I already made a report for you to show you how does it look like and then I will show you one example that how to make it. So if I go to this page, this is a report. Now if you see here, I, I'll, I will go to live. This is a speed information, minimum, maximum, average in a table form and with a bar chart next to it. Similarly, the box information, large, medium, small and a bar chart and the box travel time with a bar chart. Now this is a trial version. That's why you see this, um, this mark here, ignition reporting module trial. And I have a button here, refresh report view. So if I click refresh, it will automatically take the current values. And if you want to further print it out, just right click and say, save as PDF. And then you can save as PDF in the desktop, let's say report, and I save it. So this will save this page as report.pdf in your desktop. So which we can see, oh, this looks like without extension, but let's see if it opens. So you have this report, conveyor control report, speed, box information, and box travel time. So this is how you can generate reports based on what you want to print in your Scala screen. But that's not easy, it's a bit complicated, a little bit, how to generate these values and how to generate report in Ignition, Ignition Scala screen. So let's proceed the steps. So step one is in this window, if you see here in this project browser, you have reports. Yeah, In this, you can generate reports here like this. So you, you might have blanks, so you can right click and click new report, and then you have a report here. So in this report, you will find report overview. So this is where you can write some information. For example, sample report for conveyor uh, application. This is the description. And then you have a data tab. So when you click on the data tab, you have smart uh, start date, end date, and refresh. So you may have just these two. And you have to create refresh, then you have to create a data source. And in data source, I write some scripts. All right, let's do one thing. I will create one small report, and then I will tell you how these values, how to fill these values, okay? So I go to reports and I create new report. So this report, let's name it as report test create report so report tested test is here description i will just copy this one first step enter the description second is go to data now in the data you have start start date end date i will not touch anything here i will add one more i will call it as new parameter and this i will name it refresh this is a parameter which i want to use to refresh the report Okay, to get the current values in that. So make sure you create one parameter named refresh. And parameter type, I will choose Boolean. And its default value, I will enter zero. So Boolean is initially false, all right? Now comes the data source. Now, I want to put the information, if you see here, we want the information about speed, minimum, maximum, average, box, small, medium, large, and box time travel, minimum, maximum, average. So basically three values, minimum, maximum, and average from every table, okay? We have seen the tables before, so I will show you three queries which I have written. First query is select timestamp, minimum speed, maximum speed, average speed from system conveyor.speed. So when I run this one, it gives me minimum speed, maximum speed, and average speed and the timestamp, the maximum, the latest one. So, okay, this, so this query is giving me the latest information about what was the minimum speed, maximum, and average. So I will take this query. First, I will test it in the MySQL. You test your query when you have the results. Copy this one, copy the whole query, and go back to Ignition, and go back to the report. So in the data, in the data source, click plus, and then click SQL query, and paste this query here. Select your database. That's it. And you can give the name here. For example, the name was speed. Enter. Now let's go to the design. So we know we have query speed defined in our data source. So in the design, we have all the data source here, which we define in the second step. Okay. So all the data which you will define here, which will come here in the data source. Now we have data of speed. Okay. 
Now let's say we want to show it in a bar. So take a bar chart, put it here, and just drag the speed into the data key. And let's preview. So we have minimum speed, maximum speed, and average speed in the bar. Quite easy, right? So if you want to change the color, I would like to take a different color, maybe this one and this one. Well, this is more light. Maybe I will change this yellow to this one. So we don't need four and five, delete this one. So we have this table or this bar chart and now we need a table here. So let's take a table, just a simple table. And in the table, we need some rows and columns. So if you see our last report, here we have three rows and two columns, okay? So going back here, so three rows and two columns, we can define it here. This will be two rows, we need three, or we can take two because one is a header row. So one header row and two rows, that's fine. Okay, now we have here minimum speed, average speed and maximum speed as a text. So double click this one and this will be highlighted and you can write here minimum speed. Similarly, double click maximum speed and here average or just average speed. Okay, now if you really want to have some more effects so what i will do is i will select this this cell and go to fill and we'll fill this color some color here maybe this one similarly for maximum we'll go down fill it give some color this is just to differentiate the strings and the actual value fill this color all right now we need to fill the values so if you see your data source here open the speed, you have average, average, maximum and minimum. So just drag it here once and see how does it look like. So it has the value of average speed. So just copy this value, get into, into the cell, paste it. And select this one, make it into the center. So now it will look like this value is coming in the table. Similarly, I will do it for maximum and minimum. Sorry, this is average. This should not be here, this should be here. Maximum, copy this one, paste here. Minimum, paste here. Then if you want, you can make it center, which looks nice. This as well. So that's how we created one table. And this is the bar chart for that. This is quite easy. Okay, now if you want to give a heading here, you can take a text, make a heading, conveyor, control, report. If you want to make it bigger, go to the text. You can make it bigger. You can put it here. So that's the preview. And if you want a more text, I will put here information I can make it bold maybe a little, little bit bigger so that's the speed information we are having all right in a similar way I have designed the other shot so I've designed the way for time travel and also for box count so once you have these shots you have to you have to go to preview and if you want to have a schedule it will automatically give you a report based on the time you will enter the refresh values but let's go to let's leave it here and go back to our windows here and now this was the report which i made earlier so i'll go to main window so now here i will add new main window i will add report 2 wait window so I have report 2 which is empty so here I can put my report so wait a second okay I have to stop it now 
the port viewer, drag it here, and let me re realign it. And it says enter the path, so go to the report path and enter report test. So that's your report test. So maybe I will maybe a little bit like this. Or let's have a full view of the report. Yeah, that's the complete view. And here now I need to refresh the values. So for example, if you see this is the values, and if I change the value, so my current value changes. So if I see here, current value is 36.67, but in report two, it's, okay, this is the current we are not reading. Let's see the average one. So well, let's see the average, refresh, 54.28. And average is same, minimum is 23.68. Minimum here is 23.68, maximum 61.39. Okay, let me change some values. Maybe maximum I increase. Refresh. Now you can see maximum is 70.84. And here maximum is still the old value. So that's what I'm trying to explain. We need to refresh these values. So if you remember, we have took one parameter so if you see here again in the report test we have took a parameter and we named it refresh with the boolean and default value zero so in the scala in ignition scala whenever you change any parameter it refreshed the report that's the trick okay so this parameter i will move to one and zero i will change it to one and zero which will refresh my report so let's go back to report two and stop now here i will take a button a simple button this one and this i will rename refresh and also here refresh enter now if you if i click on the report the parameters which i choose during the report creation comes here if you see here refresh it's false okay now if i play this one and if you see these are the old values, if I refresh it, you see the values changes at 70.82. So every time I click here, it's you, you also see here loading, it refreshed the report. But we cannot open the software all the time, we need a button here. So I'm going to use this button and let's say mouse pressed and released. So when it is pressed, I want to I want to do something with it set tag value so when it is pressed now you choose you choose the parameter which should be let me see where it would be <laughs> no not here check this window this is for tag yeah now you will find here in root container report viewer refresh okay we have this is the button the thing is we have two report viewers here and i doubt this is the old one okay wait a second i will go back to my report and name it refresh two enter and go back to my window again because I also named it refresh for the last report so I don't want to confuse that so here again mouse pressed set tag value root container report view now we have refresh too okay so click OK and this will be one when this is pressed and the same parameter when I release it will be zero. Okay, apply and okay. So this will refresh the report. So now let's go online. Now these are the values. So let's see the current values. So we have 78223685797. So this is same. So let's change the value. Now we'll increase the speed a little bit. 
So I increased it, so I'm pretty sure the maximum speed is increased now. So I'll go to main window, refresh. Now maximum is 75. So in our report, it's still 70.82. So when I click refresh, hmm, I don't writing, what's wrong? Not found. Okay, let me see what's the problem. Oh, okay, okay. Now I know what's the problem. Uh, it's a stupid issue. I don't have to put the tag value here. It's not the tag. This is actually not the tag. Delete this one. Delete this one. This is the property here. So we have to set the property of the component. So the component on release should be zero and component on pressed should be one. So my mistake. Oh, not here. Copy this one, not here. Property. Because this is the component of the property of the component. It's not the tag. So I was using the tag and I was wondering why I'm having a tag value. It should be in the set property. You have to set the property of refresh to one when it is pressed, when it's released, it's zero. Apply and OK. Now in this case, if you refresh, this will be refreshed. So this was my mistake. So all you have to do is create your elements here and then you have to make a button uh, to refresh the report. And further, when you create the report, you can print it and you can save as PDF as well. So in the document, I can, I can write conveyor test, which we just made, and I save it on, the, on my desktop. And we can see this open with uh, Adobe and you will see the report here. All right. So this is how you can generate report using any elements of your Scala screens. You can just drag it, make a data source, put it in the table or in a graph, however you like. And this is just a basic about how to create a report. And I hope in, this, in these lessons you have learned enough about how to deal with databases and Scala together because it's very important that you need to store your information. Why? Because once your trial version is over or if your Scala is disconnected from your PLC, you have your information still in your database. That's the reason. So if my PLC is disconnected, I have all the information which I logged before. So you can see that here for the time travel for the box count and for the conveyor speed. So all the information is stored in your database, which you can use it to represent any values, any graphical values in a different platform. All right, so this is about Ignition Scala and the report generation. If you have any doubt, you can post me a comment and you can try this software is free of course. It's a trial version you can download from the Ignition website. And yeah, that's pretty much. And there's one more thing. If you don't have a PLC, Siemens PLC, if you just have the software PLC SIM, there is a video, I hope it's on my YouTube, that how you can use, connect the Ignition SCADA without the hardware. So you can just use a software and you can link your SCADA and you can read the information. That's also possible. So I will make some quiz which you can, which you can participate and you can test your knowledge. I hope it will be interesting. So let's see what we have in the future videos. So thank you for watching and I wish you a good learning. Bye.